At no point in your rambling, incoherent response were you even close to anything that could be considered a rational thought. Everyone in this room is now dumber for having listened to it. You lose! Good day, sir! Hi, welcome to Chem Mistakes. Here I go through actual wrong student answers from chemistry questions. Uh, try and point out what the student didn't understand that caused them to get the question wrong so that you can kind of follow along and hopefully learn a little bit. Uh, here we have a really simple convert grams to moles. So mass to moles conversion. Uh, student answer is incorrect. I want to go through and look at what's wrong, why the student might have gotten it wrong, and what they would need to do to understand it better. So many people would look at this, they would see that the um, numerator and denominator have been flipped and they would assign some kind of math error to this or think that the student had struggles with mathematical issues. Uh, I would disagree with that so I want to go through and look at what I think is going wrong in this particular case. So when I see this I don't see this being flipped as my first and foremost thing. I see this wrong answer here as indicating that this student does not have a good understanding of what molar mass is. So the molar mass of zinc, we can get off the periodic table, it's 65.39 grams per mole, which is usually written like this. And because it's written like this, most chemistry students will ignore the units on it because they don't really know what to do with the division, or they just don't care about units because, you know, whatever. So what's important though is that you know that this is grams per mole and have an idea of what that means. What that's trying to suggest is if we had a lump of zinc, like this, and that lump happened to be a mass of 65.39 65 grams, okay. but that lump would also be equivalent to one mole of zinc atoms, or 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd part. Or another way to think of this would be that this lump of zinc here being 65.39 grams means it would have the same number of particles or atoms as a 12 gram lump of carbon. So these function as two things. It's how many grams there are in one mole of that substance. It's also a relative mass of each element to one another. So if I wanted to know how much more massive one zinc particle is compared to one carbon, I could divide those two masses off the periodic table and get the relative mass between the two. Okay. Now, what's critical for this is this student here has taken this answer and started with 24.3 grams, which is a little over a third of this. So they're looking at a really much smaller chunk of zinc. And then they're going, yep, I have 1,600 moles. Well, if this is one mole, there's no way that this can be more than one mole, let alone 1,600. And so the disconnect between the answer to me is more concerning the fact that these were flipped. Now that student probably was taught in a way that was algorithmic, meaning that they were shown like something like a mole map, where they had grams, changing to moles, changing to maybe liters, changing to particles, uh, atoms, molecules, formula units, etc where they were taught using dimensional analysis, and they followed through most of the mathematics of it, but they didn't have a good sense of what this, what this was and how to translate that into this. And it was this misunderstanding that's causing this to go wrong. So what can you do to fix this? Well, a nice thing you can do to fix this is, instead of doing a dimensional analysis for moles to grams, anytime you're changing between moles and grams, you're either going to multiply or divide by your molar mass. It's going to be how you do that particular thing. So what I recommend instead of this is just start with your given and know that you're either going to multiply or divide by this. You can see that in the dimensional analysis. If it's written like this, you're multiplying. If it's written upside down, you're dividing. And then instead of going through and having someone do all the thinking for you by setting up dimensional analysis, actually sit there and think about what you should do with this. So in this particular case, I have 24.3 grams of zinc. Should I be multiplying or dividing by 65.39? So if I multiply by this, I get 1,600 moles. That doesn't make any sense for the fact that I'm starting with less than a mole, obviously. Instead, I should be dividing by that amount. Which gives me an answer of 0.372, I believe. So 0.372 makes sense 
I have less than one mole here based on the sizes that I've drawn, that answer makes sense to me, that, that fits into my scheme. Now, anytime you change from grams to moles, you will divide by the molar mass to get there. So this might eventually become algorithmic, but it's important in the first couple of times that you just sit there and think, should I be multiplying or dividing? Which answer makes sense? And which process makes sense? I'm saying I have this many grams. If I had had this many, I would have had one mole. I have less than that, and therefore I'm dividing. If I were to change this around and say something like, okay, now I have two moles of some other substance. Let's say I have two moles of carbon. Well, I know carbon is 12.01 grams per mole. That means if I had 12 grams, I would have one mole. Well, I have two moles. So now I should have double that amount. And so now I'm going to multiply to go from moles to grams. And I'm going to end up with 24.02 grams of carbon. And so that little bit of thinking is not too strenuous and will highlight the conceptual understanding of what molar mass is in a way that'll make this much easier for you to understand what you're doing. Rather than just being able to do the process, you'll know what you're doing. Okay, a simple wrong would have done just fine, but the...